day of the Olympic qualifying tournament. And we have Slovenia, the team that was unbeaten, against Venezuela, who qualified behind Lithuania in their group. Well, we've got fans in the house, and the building is getting beginning to get full. But uh, this is one of those games where if you lose, you go home, you win, you carry on. And the dream of the Olympic ticket is just two games away. There's the Slovenian fans that are making a lot of noise, obviously infused by the presence of Luka Doncic. But here's the schedule for today. Lithuania and Poland will play at 7.30 local time after Slovenia and Venezuela have completed this one. And a place in the final and one game away from Olympic qualifying is the prize. Well, Mark Mills, this uh, the group plays over. There's no there's no second chance after this one. And you've got to say the way Venezuela hung tough in those uh, group games, they're not going away. They're not going to go away easily. They're not here to make the numbers up. No, absolutely not. They're quite happy to uh, enter today's game and have a full full blown battle with Slovenia to keep their Olympic dreams alive. Obviously, they qualified in 2016. If they qualify this year, then it'll be the first time they've ever done back-to-back -back Olympics and uh, no real bigger prize for a basketball player than that. Well, somehow some Venezuelans have found their way to the gym. I'm assuming they're local. I can't think really, that trip's very doable at the moment. It's tough enough at the best of times. But how good is it that uh, we're returning more to normal with fans in the gym? And we're going to get into the player introductions for Venezuela. And if I can sum up their performance, uh, especially in their second group game, it's just tough. Yeah, absolutely. They come out and battle. They hustle really, really hard. And, and they have some inspirational leaders within that. Obviously, we're looking at Vargas. Carrera stepped up uh, in a huge performance. But they seem to be getting big performances from across the board. Yes, they enter today's game, you know, as underdogs, that's clear. They're going up against uh, a Slovenian side that not only on paper look good, what we've seen so far, they look phenomenal. You cannot write this Venezuelan team out. The one thing they do is they play with a lot of heart and they do have the options to score in a hurry. Well, they've had the extra day's rest as well, uh, having played day one. And also, in Slovenia's case, they're going to have to go... Th they went the last two days back to back, then just one day off yesterday before they have to come back. But they went so deep on the roster that uh, all the minutes spread out. Everybody's making a contribution. I think I think this team, one thing it definitely has, it has a lot of miles in the tank. Yeah, unbelievable amount of miles in the tank. And the great thing that you have if you're in the coaching staff of Slovenia is that no matter who comes on the floor, there isn't a lower level of ability that's coming on um, six players in double digits scoring shooting over 50 percent from range this is a team that are at the peak of their performances at the moment well obviously they're headlined by Luka Doncic but as uh, Mark just said there are literally 12 players in uniform that are all making a contribution for coach Sekulic we'll be back to talk more uh, about this one after the national anthems and we will start with the national anthem of Venezuela. And now the national anthem of Slovenia.
Well, I always say nothing like a national anthem to just add that uh, extra dimension that national team basketball has. Great uh, contingent of Slovenian fans joining in the singing of the Slovenian national anthem. Here's the third team on the floor for this afternoon's game. Mr. Vafuev, Mr. Yu, and Mr. Lazzolini from Rico Taipei, uh, Chinese Taipei and Italy. Uh, these uh, officials also uh, looking forward to their opportunity to officiate in an Olympic Games. So, two games to go. Two games from an opportunity to be in Tokyo. And that guy in particular, Michael Carrera, is going to do everything it possibly can to get his Venezuelan team over the line. There's a starting lineup, Mark. Yeah, Carrera, 16 points, 12 rebounds, four assists against Carrera, and he just turned up like a man possessed. He was hitting the board so hard. And then the likes of uh, Chario as well had a big game, 16 points. Really lit it up from outside. Four from ten from deep. But uh, a fair bit of focus has gone on this young man, Gali Soho. 10 points, seven rebounds, three assists, just 21 years old. Plays the game above the rim and comes with uh, a huge amount of athleticism. And it'll be interesting to see how they deploy that today against Slovenia. Well, as Coach Duro, his, uh, his performance of his bench was uh, fundamental the other day. And that's where Soho was uh, one of the key protagonists for Venezuela. Again, we're going to look at the starting lineup for Slovenia, which uh, we're not expecting any surprises to. Maybe they won't start Luka Doncic and sort of maybe suggest that he hasn't delivered, but uh, <laughs> I'm not sure that's going to happen. And uh, there is the starting lineup, and it's uh, pretty, it is the same starting lineup that uh, has gone out there for Slovenia in every game. Yeah, absolutely. P tons of talent throughout the 12, not just the starting five. Chan Chao, obviously, in the starting five, he's really staking a claim to be one of the iconic Slovenian players now. The one that I look at alongside uh, Doncic is Prepolic as well, but Doncic 15.5 points, 9.5 re uh, assists and 6 rebounds. Hasn't played in the fourth quarter yet, so he's only played 19.3 minutes a game. He's just a stat machine. The way he plays the game is unlike anyone else we've seen in recent times, and no wonder there's so much hype behind him. Well, Alexander Sekulic, once your country has been a Eurobasket champion and Slovenia are the current, Eurobasket champions, the uh, expectation and the pressure to deliver on a regular basis grows. And, uh, well, it's not weighing heavy on his shoulders at the moment because the way he has got an atmosphere and uh, a feel around this Slovenian national team. You'd think they were out there playing ball in the park at times. They just love the way they play together. And Coach Duro with his last moments of instructions for Venezuela. I just think they've got to be aggressive. They, they've just literally got to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Slovenia right from the outset to try and make this less than a pretty basketball game. Yeah, the, the, the key for Venezuela, without a shadow of doubt, is if they can try and turn this a little bit uglier, a bit more fragmented than a game. We saw what Slovenia did to Poland when they got out and ran and they were just given free reign, they were dominant. Um, so for Venezuela, yeah, it's, it's grind the game out, make it maybe a little bit uglier, but that's a big ask. Slovenia have 12 players that play basketball beautifully, so to try and lock out all of those players, I'm not sure Slovenia have it, but it's going to be an interesting 40 minutes to see them uh, put everything on the floor to keep their Olympic dreams alive. Well, one thing's for sure, if we get to the 100-point mark again, there's only going to be one team winning this. So as much as uh, we've absolutely fallen in love with the way Slovenia play this game because they share the ball and shoot the ball and it's just a beautiful thing to watch if it's in the hundred if it's getting towards the hundreds they'll be in the semi they'll be in the final tomorrow so it's up to Venezuela and they've got a, it's 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 a little strange to say this Mark I think they have to almost try and bully um, the, the Slovenians out of that rhythm they had in, in the same way that they tried to bully career and get got the win earlier in the competition So welcome to Kaunas. Slovenia in the white uniform. Venezuela in the burgundy colored uniform. And they come up with a steal straight off the back. Ruiz has it. They open it out for the three. is short. And they Doncic and Ruiz go after it on the glass. But Venezuela with two scraps for the loose ball. Carrera is going to hold this. There's only seven on the possession. Gilant has it. Steps back. Fires up the three and way off. And there's the buzzer, but uh, Doncic will bring. And that's how tough it is to break this Slovenian team down. And Doncic picks up a foul in transition. And I think as great as the effort that Venezuela had, even when they had the loose ball, even when they came up a bit, 
they didn't get an open look, they didn't get a clean look. No, they didn't. I think they showed a, an early signal of intent, though, Venezuela, in that phase of play. They chased everything down. They're going to hustle the offensive glass really, really hard, and Slovenia will have to deal with that. But straight away, you know, people level at, at Luca that he might not be the fastest player on the floor. He seemed pretty swift up the floor in that transition to me. Yeah, he makes the first from the free throw line, and Slovenia immediately tick over the scoreboard. And uh, it's, it's an interesting uh, relationship that Sakubic has with this lineup. He's, he, he is uh, the ultimate challenge for these players, which is the way it should be. Yeah, he's holding them to account, but, and as importantly as that, they hold each other to account. Up the floor with some pressure. Lazic, who just me, must be the most unpopular person on the Slovenian team. Whoever he's guarding just has a, a hard shift ahead. Nice back cut, easy two. Vargas shows all his experience and just looked off Doncic and go, went back door. Yeah, capitalised. Doncic just fell asleep on the defensive end, probably uh, thinking about the next possession at the other end, and uh, Vargas made him pay. Good effort, defensive of Venezuela, trying to take this uh, Slovenian team out of their rhythm. And uh, Toby settled for the three. And I think you could probably say they'd rather Toby shoot the three than anyone else in the Slovenian unit. No disrespect to him, it's just the talent of everybody else. Vargas is long with the three. Lazic is fouled, and Carrera, as you said, the latest Venezuelan just to hunt down the ball. Yeah, that's all he did in the Korean game. You could see that was his determination. He knew that if he was going to, you know, go after the offensive ball and the loose ball, uh, that the good things were going to happen, and it definitely turned out that way. The matchup I'm interested to see straight away, we saw it in the last play, but maybe not see it this time, was Vargas against Doncic. 17-year <laughs> difference between those two. Um, definitely players at opposite ends of their career. But uh, you wonder if Vargas is maybe even more motivated to get to the Olympics because... Many, maybe not many more opportunities for him to do so. Well, if he does, if he does all after this, he may get towards the oldest Olympian ever on the basketball court. But uh, as that goes back to Doncic, we'll get the Toby ball screen, who rolls. Great read by Carrera. That's out the scout. They, they run that play and send, and Carrera pulls up and pops. Can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound. Powers up off the glass again. He just can't get it to job. Chancha down the floor. Oh! Took off on the runway and threw it down. Yeah, the problem they had, Ruiz and Carrera, their two rim protectors, were nowhere to be seen. Chanchar just beat them in a foot race down the floor. Holding foul away from the ball. Chanchar gets held for the foul. And again, I, this isn't us being overly positive about Venezuela in, 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 in the face of a great opponent, but uh, they really are going at this hard. That was a great gut by Carrera, just in his uh, change of pace, great execution, draws the contact. And there's a few little battles that they are actually winning at the moment. You know, gets it off, Carrera, feet set, lines up the three, is short. And day one, when he couldn't make a three, that reminds you of that. Oh, behind the back, and I don't think Blazac was expecting the pass because the pass wasn't that bad. No, the pass wasn't too bad, slightly ahead of him, but like you say, I think Blazic thought that Chanchal was going to use his size advantage and just go just go straight to the rim. Maybe a little bit loose at the moment from Slovenia. Maybe uh, not fully focused. Chuo into the half court. A little bit of lull in this uh, Venezuelan offense. Reverses the basketball. Chuo, a little hesitation. Tried to kick it to Chuo. Carrera, and that's a 24 second, and they're finding the same problem that uh, both Poland and uh, Angola had. Their inability to break down the man on, who's defending the ball means everything's in front of the defense, so every passing lane is contested. And you, it's just a, we can talk about their offense as much as we want, and we love it, but their defense is pretty impressive. Yeah, Venezuela nearly spent, I think they did spend all 24 seconds outside the three-point line, um, and that's going to be tough to win a game against Slovenia if that's where you're forced to play your offense. Doncic going baseline, nice cut and timing by Toby, just waited, waited for the help to go, didn't go too quickly, then gets in the scene, and the Carrera was very late on the rotation to help the helper. Leon gets it and picks some pops with Carrera, he's, gonna, he's got to keep shooting that shot if it's open. Great move to the hoop though for two, and Chanchar. I think assumed he would, and Dlagic with a little behind the back draws the contact on Vargas. Yeah, I think you're right on the offensive end for Venezuela. It's far more important that they get to the basket. Um, and when they do, Carrera goes to the basket straight away. 
you're seeing the likes of Ruiz try and get in there and get ready for offensive rebounds. I think that's where they're going to get the most joy today rather than trying to rely on the perimeter game. Oh, too easy. Great pass, great cut, but uh, too easy as Venezuela get broken down on just a simple back, back cut out of bounds. Will has it, Vargas. And again, the rotation and help and it's just out of the top draw. Leave the feet though. Chiro goes up, pops the mid-range two. You'll need to stay focused and you'll need to concentrate and work your way through the 24 seconds. He's going to be tested here, Venezuela. They are, but they also need to make sure that their movement isn't all lateral. They do need to go towards the basket at some point, be it a pass or a drive. Oh, oh. my word, what a pass. Yeah, made Venezuela pay. The double team came across chasing. And uh, Doncic has the passing ability to find anyone on the floor. But Vargas, as you saw, walking with uh, Dragic, his job obviously from Coach Duro is to say, don't help off Dragic. Well, sooner or later, you're going to have to change it upstairs. And Chenka with the easy two. And Luka Doncic becomes provider and delivers yet another assist for a team that averages 32 assists a game. And they just share it beautifully. 12-6 with 5.45 to go in one and they are just fun to watch. Yeah, they are. Doncic already picking up his fourth assist of the game, um, and all of them have been pretty beautiful assists as well. They haven't been easy passes. Uh, he's really running the show on the offensive end. And then on the defensive end, Slovenia just continue with their brand of basketball. Yeah, they're keeping Venezuela a long way away from the basket, applying a huge amount of pressure, and they can, because they know they can rotate down the roster, and you still have beat, speed and talent ready to come on the floor with fresh legs. Well, lots said about the quality of the ability of Slovenia to shoot the three. But uh, obviously Venezuela have decided they're not going to give up the open threes and all they've given up so far is everything going to the basket. So, you know, pick your poison. But at the moment, they're, the poison they're picking is asking Slovenia to attack the ring. Not always as open as Chankar on the real throwdown. But... Uh, you can't, you can't even see the help in the picture on no. the replay. For me, what they need to do is they need really looking at the Venezuelan roster. They've only got one true rim protector in Graparol, uh, and I'd be tempted to see him on the floor, if I'm honest. At least if you are going to chase out, you know, and, and try and stop the perimeter game, you need someone there that is going to provide some form of resistance, because at the moment, it's easy picking to Slovenia. Well, 12 to 6, and Slovenia after the timeout, and predictably, but... Uh, if you're Venezuela, you're hoping they're not going to be. They're up the floor. Joe has it. He's going to go on the dribble with Vlasic, who gets a little pick from Ruiz. Toby, Toby has to help. They'll switch back. Ruiz has it. He's going to back it out already at nine. Joe has to settle for the three, and he's short. Uh, Ruiz is going to be called for the reaching foul. And Fortunately, should we say, called for the reaching foul because at the, as soon as they had possession, Vlasic was beyond us and we're at the halfway line. And Toby was just about to release it for another easy two. Yeah, he was. Chario should have taken that first option. He's, he's not played with the confidence he played in the previous game against Korea. And uh, they're going to make a couple of changes now. Well, so hot in the game. And he's going to have the... Uh, Challenge of guarding Luka Doncic, picks it up, Lazic. I like that as a defensive matchup. I think Soho could cause Doncic problems. Toby again with a pick and pop. Chankar on the glass, keeps it alive. Lazic hunts it down. Slovenia are going to have to recycle this one, which they do. Doncic again, comes back, steps back, takes the three, count it. And you can't criticize the defense. Oh. Soho's done absolutely everything you would ask. Didn't overcommit. There's a hand in the face. It's a challenge shot. The problem you've got is the uh, the man shooting the ball is Luka Doncic. Well, the off-ball defense was excellent on pick and roll. We had to shoot it because they did a great job. And yeah. well, all it means is it's 15-6 and there's seven seconds on the possession. And they haven't still haven't reached the three-point line. Vargas is under so much pressure. They have to throw up a prayer of a three with Ruiz. And again, he's your last three-point option on the floor. Doncic is fouled and as the referee's whistle is the only respite the Venezuela are getting yeah it is at the moment it's just a split second too late to move his feet so hard there and Doncic knows well enough how to draw the foul but 
Yeah, unbelievable on that last defensive possession for Slovenia. I don't think Venezuela got beyond the centre logo. No. They spent most of the time jumping around on the uh, Olympic qualifiers logo, so it could be an exceptionally long night for them if they're not able to break down this defence. Well, uh, rotations off the Venezuela bench as uh, you get your wish, and uh, Windy Gaylorol checks in. Luka Doncic on the free throw line. Very quiet first five and a half minutes for Luka. This will be, <laughs> um, if he makes this, I think he's what, on two, uh, seven yep. already? Seven points, three boards, four assists. Some of us would be happy with that stat line at the end of the game. <laughs> for some of us, that's a season stat line. <laughs> it is. That's a season high, right? <laughs> And there's no let up. Relentless is the is, is really is the word that uh, the, the sums up the way this Slovenian team does play defense. So they're up the floor straight away as uh, Nikolic checks into the game. And we thought Blazic is a tough defender. <laughs> Nikolic's ability defensively is unreal. His foot speed is so impressive. Well, Krovac again has just played the best off-ball defense we've seen for a while. Carrera goes off the glass for two. And that's good execution away from the ball. Once you actually can get it off the middle, do start running your cuts. If they are in that close, you should be able to execute screens off the ball. No switch from Slovenia. Easy two for, for Carrera. Toby on a pick and pop. Underneath, great hands and recovery. And Carrera's in that mode again. He's just refusing for his team to play soft. The open three in transition is good. All about the effort but uh, Michael Carrera inspires his team to deliver, and Stefantis knocks down the three. And it's a 17-11 game with just over three and a half to go. Step back by Delakic, he's no good under pressure. Carrera again is at the center of it for Venezuela. And uh, you want to be inspired by a teammate, Michael Carrera is doing it again right now. Yeah, absolutely. He's leading by example. Um, and the great thing that he's doing is he's clearly studied the game tape. He knows where their kind of pressure release passes are for Slovenia, when they're looking to pass to the corner, when they're looking to feed it low. He knows what angle those passes are going to be made at, just making sure he's in those lanes. Well, Gregory Vargas, at 35 years old, almost seems unfair to be have to put him through this much pressure. Gederol needs a pass. Soho has it, pulls the trigger for three, nice release but short. And Slovenia are going to run again. Nikolic puts it on the floor. Palic wraps it down. Toby again, he's blocked! Oh, wow! Unless it's the weak hand, that looks tough. Unless it's the lower hand that's pushed into the body, that looked relatively clean. Let's have a look. That view's not really going to be the greatest no. view for us. This one will be. I think you can say, with the, with the help of the replay, let's just say that's a very tough call on Carrera. Yeah, I think so. And what a statement that would have been. And he's yeah. inspired his team after the timeout break to cut this to a 17-11. Toby's going down to throw it down hard, and Carrera says, no way. And that's Carrera's second foul as well, so that is a big call by the official. And Duro feeling it. It's a tough night at the office anyway and he needs every little bit of help he can get. I mean, it's very difficult from where we're sitting to say. It was almost like the whistle went because he thought there was going to be a foul. Yeah, sometimes you, I suppose you have to, right? The game's moving at such a speed, you're predicting what's going to happen. But yeah, I think that was uh, one of very few mistakes. Soho gets it off, gets a little pass back from to Fontes, little floater in the lane for two. And Venezuela hanging around here, 19 to 13. And you, you don't have the World Cup you had without you know being able to compete at the highest level. Propel just puts it on the floor. So really giving them a hard time. Toby's the release again at the high post. And that's a little bit too much contact as uh, Johanna Sefontes picks up the first. And I like that Gratterol in that situation didn't show too hard. I don't think he particularly needs to. I don't think the Slovenian team at the moment are looking to use that screen to create the open three. I think they're looking to create the space for the interior pass. So I'd much rather at the moment Gratterol was just showing slightly, but making sure that he's covering any cut from uh, Toby. Well, again, it's that pick your poison debate, isn't it? I mean, yeah. is the, Toby struggled from the three-point line over two so far. And 
of all the Slovenians on the floor. He can shoot the three, does it regularly in the ACB in Spain. Second of the three throws is good. It was interesting to just see there Carrera and Toby lining up the, next to each other, and clearly Toby was saying that was a clean block. It gave Carrera a pat on the backside, <laughs> and Carrera kind of said thanks. I appreciate that. Which is exactly Toby knows exactly what he's doing, <laughs> just to hammer home the frustration. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Here's Vargas, and without um, Lazic and Doncic on the floor, the uh, the ease to advance the basketball is definitely getting better. Nice pass to the inside, and they blow the two. Great follow. Tremendous work on the glass. And uh, Gattolo acknowledges the fact he should have left the ball alone, but uh, if he hadn't moved it, he might have landed on it. It's a great follow. He's the man, he's the first man on the move. Oh, actually, he did knock it away. So, uh, six point game in Venezuela. And it is noticeable the drop defensively with, uh, without the, the starting perimeter in the game for Slovenia. Not some offensively, they're still okay. Defensively, they're struggling. Toby, easy pass, easy two. And one. Rovats hit the floor pretty hard there. Holding his head. Soho had no real chance of blocking that. He was so far behind the play, it was only ever going to be a foul. Yeah, Krovac. I think he's, he's, suff he's suffered there because of the frustration of the turnover. Yeah. I think the officials are going to review it now to see if it's not sportsmanlike as well. Uh, it didn't look unsportsmanlike to me at normal speed. It looks hard. That doesn't necessarily make it unsportsmanlike. Has he got any hope of actually blocking the ball? Is it a basketball action? He's a long way from the ball and he does catch the head. Uh, let's hear the referee. I hope people at home can hear him because we're struggling to hear him here. Yeah, I think with the masks on, it makes it quite difficult to make out what the officials are saying. But we're getting to see what they see. So this is what they're making their decision based upon. His arm was from his... He was straight and he threw the arm to the front. He, he, he didn't swing the arm. Okay, so for you, it's personal foul. Yeah, for my side, it's a personal foul. Unfortunately, he hit in the head. But, mm, what do you think? Let, let's, let's find another angle. Go, go back, go back and give me his normal speed in that, in that, in that angle. Yeah, this one, this one, this one. In normal speed, in normal speed. Yeah, it trying to break, yeah, yeah. To be interesting. With the conclusive. Yeah. I think it was a little it was it was a close call. Yeah. But because but you, you saw in that last still, and again apologies if you couldn't hear the uh, official. But yeah, I think it's the right call. I think he's gone aggressive, like you say, I think there is some frustration in that foul. But he I still think he's, the ball, was he? he's clearly trying to still yeah, block the ball. Even if he has very little chance of yeah. actually doing it, he's still blocking the ball, but he's now had to go to the bench because he's picked up his second foul. And he, was, he, he had little chance of it because of uh, Krovat's ability to protect the ball and keep it away from him. So, and he steps off, has a little bit of extra time to recover, makes the free throw. 24-15. to And again... Once they get you in the half court and they keep you outside the three, that's all you're going to get. Great stroke. The Thelmuse had a really quiet tournament so far. Stroke that one. And any of you that watch uh, South American basketball, he's a really effective big man shooter. For Pelbic, quick release on the three is off. Great rebound. Poor finish. You've got to say poor finish by Dimic, but uh, super job on the glass. Yeah, well, you got to feel sorry for Gratterol. He grabbed the rebound and actually bounced it off his teammate's head um, to go out of bounds. So it's the right call by the officials. Definitely a Slovenian ball. Interesting to see Preplic into the game now. Didn't play game day one, but certainly made amends in game day two with 17 points. Going to go long to Preplic. Catch, release, he's off. And Dimitri going to work on the glass. Gets inside, he's blocked from behind. And we've got a whistle on the play. Dimitri's talking to the official when the play is still on. And uh, that one, that won't, 
he won't be rewarded for that by coach Sekulic. He's been pretty consistent about the way he looks at that because he wants his player to play through it. And it's not what you expect from Dimets either. He's not that kind of player, really. He's just the workhorse that goes in and gets stuff done, as he's shown there. Straight away, he's coming in, he's picking up scrappy rebounds. It's not the glamorous side of the game, but it's critical for every roster to have that kind of player. And you've got to say, you know, the decision by coach Duro to extend the defense and stay on the shooters and uh, you know make them make plays has been part of the reason that it's a six-point game. They, they, he, they've made that decision. They're going to pick the poison in that particular way. Yeah, they're down the other end, they've struggled. But uh, Venezuela very much in this at the moment. Sanchez is back. And Slovenia are up the floor. So Coach Sekulic looking to squeeze some more margin out of the situation before the end of the first quarter, last minute. Great rotation again. Yeah. About just recognize Doncic had overplayed the passing lane. Joe gets his feet set for three, is off. Long rebound collected. I've got to say, veteran play. Watch the ball, you don't have to get off the floor. The Vargas stops, pops the three, that's off right. And then another offensive rebound. Chiro from halfway line, off oh, the glass. Yeah, the bank is open, my goodness me. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, a and Slovenia shot. are going to take the time out because, hey, with uh, 29 seconds, just 30 seconds to go, they only trail by five. And the uh, impressive start by Slovenia, where they were forced to make plays going to the ring, has carried on. But uh, Venezuela really competing well, trail five. It's 26 to 21. But what we've got is the Slovenian defensive intensity has dropped off a cliff. They're no longer playing defense outside the three point line. Let's listen to coach uh, Sakulic. And it's at the defensive end that the changes need to be made by Slovenia. They've just, I wouldn't say the word lazy, but they're just not playing with the same intensity. And they've certainly got the players on the floor that can play at that level. The likes of Muric is a phenomenal defensive presence. Preflic plays at a high tempo. But they'll be hoping in the last 30 seconds, not just to get a score, but maybe to get a stop at the other end as well. So, Luka Doncic. Going to try and uh, use as much of the 24 as possible. Well, it opened up for it. And kicked it off his foot. Unusual mistake. as well to have a chance to cut this to a four or a three-point game. Yeah, it could be down to a single possession, and if you were to say to Venezuela, you'll be within even five points at the end of the first quarter, and you will have scored over 20 points, I think they would have been very, very happy with that. They take Doncic out. No, no, no point in playing defense with the potential <laughs> picking up a foul as uh, Propelvich sits as well. Plazic is back. That's uh, a foul. And Slovenia still had two to give. A little bit of sympathy with Nikolic, uh, really, because people have been playing defense like that for the whole of the quarter. Yeah, they have. They have. I, I, my personal opinion is that it's a foul. Yeah, Vargas yeah. has just about got the, the step on him to push through, and Nikolic is just closing the door a little bit too hard and giving him nowhere to go. Slovenia still have one foul to give in the last. 10 seconds of this fascinating first quarter. Vargas, who's going to have to go a little quick. Wraps it. Got it, great all. Couldn't collect it. Poor pass, and there's point five to go, and uh, <laughs> Doncic is going to come back in and try to make the... Uh, Special teams, Luka Doncic. That's what we've got points. now, right? Well, he's going to bring it in, so it's not going to be his shot. Um... Pelic is going to go in for Dimitch, and someone in a burgundy uniform is going to have to guard a guard. Surely really it's going to be back screens for Muric and Hrovat with Blazic going down. 
Nah, back screen didn't work. Lazic. Hits the 24 second device and nothing else. And we have reached the end of quarter one. And for those of you that were expecting to see a demonstration of how to get to the final, think again, because Venezuela are hung tough. They trail 26 to 21 at the end of one. And it certainly wasn't the first quarter that I think we were all expecting. I think we were expecting Slovenia to pick up where they left off. And realistically, on the offensive end, as we can see by Shana's shooting percentages, they have. They've not shot the ball well from outside, though. Only one from six, considering they've been shooting over 50% so far. Venezuela, they're just keeping in it. They're staying there. They're not going anywhere. Well, let's have a look at the best plays of the first quarter. And while we're saying that... Uh... Slovenia haven't functioned, they still have 26 points at the end of one, so they're still on target for another 100 point game. But uh, I, I think you've got to give coach uh, Duro a lot of credit here because they've made a decision that says we're not going to overhelp, we're not going to over rotate. If we get beat a couple of times going to the ring, things are looking good because we've seen none of that ball movement that Slovenia have really opened up the, uh, in the two previous games. The ball has slowed down because Venezuela has stayed out there. Yeah, absolutely. Venezuela has stayed in the game. They, they, you know, they battled the whole way through. The concern I have, if I'm Coach Duro, Venezuela really did struggle to get any options on the offensive end when Slovenia truly went up the gears and really applied the pressure. Uh, Venezuela was struggling to get even into the three-point area. You know, when ben, when Slovenia were applying that pressure. So, do Venezuela have an answer for that? Because if not, you kind of wonder: is it just a matter of Slovenia increasing the intensity on the defensive end to uh, win the game? Well, for all the uh, courtside announcers, fans coming back means they've actually got a job to do. For, for the last few months, they've, they've been here. They've been telling everybody what's going on, but there's been no one to tell. Now they're loving this. They are playing the crowd. The crowd are into it. And we've got a real semi-final on here, 26 to 21. Important that Venezuela get a little bit more joy down the offensive end, a little bit more rhythm to what they're running. Chiro has it, moves it on. Fermi gets it back to him. Down to eight on the possession. Gonna back it out. Going against Dragic. Great rotation. They're gonna get a hand on the shot. Doncic is late on it. Toby comes down with a defensive rebound and Dragic will advance the ball. And if you don't stop the ball, he will go at you. Doncic. The ball gets stuck. And there's a whistle on the play. Sefantes is like, Luca who? I'm going after it. And I like that. It was in my pre-game notes. I can see Cervantes and Soho being the main defensive problems for Luca. They've got wingspan, they've got, you know, length, and they also have quick feet. That's tough for Luca to work against, but Luca has quite a few uh, weapons in the arsenal. Doncic in the post, going to work down low. Backs in inside that Toby again with third three. This time he makes it. You know, they've got a lot of confidence in mean, stretching the floor at the five. And that one he knocks down. Felmi is the man reversing the basketball. Fontes checks his options. Vargas comes back to get it. A little bit more rhythm to what they're running, but now they picked the ball up. Nice pass. Just waited for the reaction and then saw the open man. And that's bet play. And Chiro gets the two. Venezuela is certainly capitalizing while Slovenia's defensive level has just completely fallen down. They're not playing. Nowhere near with the same intensity. Dukic, Doncic goes to in the post, and the help from Ruiz was excellent. Took away all passing options, and again, no one helps, so the passing lanes are secure. Two on one break. Doncic, uh, Dragic goes up, doesn't get it. Great work by Blazic on the glass, and a foul called. Vargas takes the protection of the ring. I don't mind that. 35 years old, Vargas giving absolutely everything he's got. And uh, you'd much rather send Dragic to the line than just give him the transition too. Just keeps momentum from forming for Slovenia. Chanchard steps back in. And Slovenia go back to the starters. 8.32 to go in the half and the starting lineup restored. Everybody's a little bit more chippy with the officials today from Slovenia because, and that's a moral success already for Venezuela. And he's going to call the offensive foul for the clear out. I don't think Vargas appreciates that call. 
Uh, the replay was a little late. I can understand the call. It's I don't think Kubian's intentionally slapping me in the face, but he has certainly made contact with that flailing arm. Char hands it off. Doncic. Gets action off the down screen. Quick catch and release is no good. So Vlasic on the glass. Toby can't complete. Great challenge. You've got to give a lot of credit. To propel me there, which wouldn't give up the easy two. Chiro, who doesn't care where he shoots the ball from, because that's halfway to the halfway line, and he makes another three in Venezuela. Not only hanging in here, stay in it. Interesting shot as well, not the one that coach I'm sure would have wanted to see, particularly very early in the shot clock. And Ruiz comes up with a steal. This pass, passing lane defense, Chivantes for three in transition is off. And the neutrals amongst the crowd would have uh, willed that one to drop. Yeah, I think the Lithuanian fans are, are dual citizens today. I think they're, they're cheering on Venezuela a little bit in the stands. Great find. Zalagic gets in the lane, drops it inside. And Toby hangs on and throws it down. I think realistically, from Venezuela's point of view, Ruiz is really struggling to contain Toby. I think Grafarol is only the defensive option that's going to stop what Toby can do to them. Kubian, quick catch and release. <laughs> 33, 26, seven, just over seven to go in the half. And uh, <gasps> it's been a lot of plaudits for the Slovenian team over their first two games. And uh, I think we're finding a little bit more out about them right now. Yeah, I think so. Like you say, they're averaging 115 points across those first two games, which is just unbelievable. Particularly at this level, it's not like they're playing lower grade international teams. They're playing some of the best in the world and still being able to put those performances in. But uh, yeah, the, the different style from Venezuela is certainly uh, knocking them off their stride a little. And Chanchar couldn't get the three to go. Whistle on the play as uh, your point about Ruiz is uh, hammered home again because he really couldn't contain Toby's effort to get to the glass. And uh, Mikhail Carrera is making the point to the official. They don't need uh, any more help. They're a good team. So a 4-0 foul count early in this um, second quarter. And a lot of that has been around the ring and a bit about trying to control Mike Toby. Doncic on the baseline, will inbound. Nice roll, super fine, great execution. Vlasic just again held his space before he came back to the, to the ball. There's so much more defensively, and that's, a, that's Vlasic holding. But uh, defensively, with Vlasic taking the point, it's a tough ask for any team. Yeah, and I much prefer that. I'm, you know, if I'm, if I'm coach uh, Sekulic, I'm, I'm looking at it saying, I don't mind him picking up that foul. At least we're showing that we're trying to push Venezuela's offense away from the basket again. Carrera's going to hand off. Chiro gets into the foul, pop, foul line, pops the two. No good. And Slagic comes down and turns it over in traffic. He had open people ahead of him as well. Then pulls up, long two, drops it. First score of the game for Kubiak. And he's one of those players that hasn't shown his consistency in this Olympic qualifying tournament, but if he gets on form... Doncic with the short three, and Venezuela with a five on three here if they... or four on three if they'd have given it up, but they draw the contact. Vlasic takes one for the team, and that'll be, that's two quick ones for him. And it's the first time we've really seen any discomfort for Slovenia, really. We're seeing a different body language on the bench from the coaching staff. We're certainly seeing a different body language from the players. This is the first time they've, they've looked rattled so far in counters this week. Leon needs a space, finds a pass, so hold. Can't drop the three. Defensive rebound, Luka Doncic. And he advances the basketball. Toby again on the three-point line, likes the spot, drops it. Two from four from that three-point range, made his last two. And if you're going to give him that time, well, again, it is picking your poison. 
Yeah, it is, but you also have to pay respect. You know, for me, I wouldn't have given Toby respect until he starts making them in a game. He started making them. You're going to need to step out to that. Do you need to chase it off the three-point line? Probably not, but you do need to pay a bit more respect. Sufontes moves it on. Now, look, and gets Vlasic in the air, gets to the hoop, tries to scoop one off the glass and finishes the pretty play with a soft touch. Yeah, like you say, it was just that delicate fake that got Vlasic off his feet and opened the lane up for him. Eight-point game. Doncic, lane opens up, gets inside, second step, floats one off the glass, off the ring, softly for two. Doesn't need the, the, uh, the backboard, just lays it onto the top of the ring. He just, just has a wonderful way of keeping the defender on his hip. And no matter where he's going, he can control the pace of the defender and he just keeps him locked out with the hip. It's going to be offensive, yeah. The first one was almost offensive. Dragic always had the control of the penetration. Yeah, third foul on Soho now with that as well. But yeah, Dragic just with perfect footwork on the defensive end and Soho being drawn into that one. Kravats is uh, checking in for... Hacker Blazic. No surprise, Saho going to the bench as uh, Jose Vargas comes back in. Doncic will advance the basketball. Opens up. She's going to put it up for Toby again. And I think we've seen that play in every single game. If the help doesn't come, Mike Toby becomes a real offensive focus at the moment for Slovenia, and he's not turning down the responsibility. Yeah, for me, Coach Duro has to bring Gratterol back in. He's the only one that's successfully been able to guard Toby, both as a perimeter player and as a roller to the basket. And the Duro for three is no good. And Toby getting stats at every end of the floor right now. Dragic will... Advance the ball, takes it, drive lane opens up, goes with the left hand, can't finish. And Carrera, not surprisingly, comes down with a rebound foul by Klovat, who didn't like the numbers beyond him. So with him and Dlagic in the, in the picture, it would have been a four on three if he hadn't fouled. So Dlagic will sit, Pelvic will come back in. Same rotation as the first half for Slovenia. And the other thing, Mark, I think, you know, Mike Toby's extended minutes in comparison to the uh, first two games yeah. tells you a little bit about how reliant are they on him in the five. And looking forward, that could be a big point of weakness that might get exploited. Yeah, particularly if they do make the final. And if it's Lithuania in the yeah. final, obviously going up against Valentunas and Sabonis tomorrow. Carrera with a tough turnaround with a soft touch gets the two. That's going to be a, a, a certainly a tough matchup because Toby really is their only offensive threat, you know, in the low post. Dimets is there, but he's not really wants to be a focus offensively, and I think Slovenia need a big man. Doncic off of one foot, can't get it to go. And again, Slovenia now, we've, uh, we've got to get back. It's a four on two. Vargas with a floater off the glass for two. Back to a single-digit game. They're turning their defense into points. They've done that. Points off turnovers. They've done really well throughout this whole uh, this Olympic qualifying tournament. On Chich over his head, lines it up for Chan Chai. Goes hard off the glass for two. Pretty finish. You've got to respect the jump shot, but he can put it on the floor. Vargas tries to answer from the three-point oh. line and does. And I like that, that little injection of pace from Guillain. Bringing the ball up the floor nice and fast before Slovenia will really even settle. At the moment, although Slovenia have their 10-point lead, they're looking a little bit uncomfortable. Uncomfortable enough for Coach Sakulic to take the timeout. 44 to 37, seven points is the margin, 2.40 to go. Slovenia timeout. Okay, be here, 
Well, you have to say, tell it as it is, and coach has just done that because they've, they've given up open shot after open shot in transition, last few possessions, and hence, seven-point game. Yeah, absolutely, and I like the simplicity. You know, at this stage and at this level, you don't need to get into the intricacies with the players. They know what they're supposed to be doing. It's the basic messages. One, stop talking to the refs because that's distracting you. You're not focusing on your game. You're focusing on the refs, and it's not the refs causing you to have the problems. It's, it's your defense. Um, so really clear, simple messages for the team to focus on. Doncic. Into the half court. We'll take the ball screen. Chanchal will pick and pop. Doncic down low, goes, gets contact. And to be, if you asked him, he was either going to get an open look or a foul throughout the whole play. <laughs> yeah, he knew what was coming. He saw into the future on that one. And Carrera just got caught. And he knew almost instantly that he got caught. The unfortunate thing for Venezuela is that's the third foul on Carrera. And he, you know, if they are going to come away with the, the, the upset win here today, Carrera is going to be a big part of that, that's for sure. Well, they do have Bethelme making a contribution in this one. So he comes in for him. He's not Carrera in terms of his, uh, the way he scraps and fights, etc. But his quality is there. Doncic makes the first. It only goes one for two. And I think this is better from Slovenia, that they're putting some pressure on the ball. It's much better for them. It dictates the tempo of the game for them in a, in a much more positive way. They go to the third side. Nice pass. And they did a really nice job in execution. They moved the defense, moved the help, but then just uh, couldn't have the pass. Was a little hot. Tenchar will inbound. Luka Doncic will advance the basketball. Just over two to go in the half. Key two minutes of Venezuela. If they can keep this at single digits, they'll be they're right in it. Chang Char thinks about the three, hands it off. Propel but will attack it. He's instant. Off the glass for two. Blows it. Well, literally a gimme. Vargas. And they do a nice job yeah. in transition, picking up runners and protecting the ring. Yeah, Doncic locked out those passing lanes, otherwise it was going to be an easy transition basket. Let's roll with a tough touch for two. Windy. That's a great move. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. It was a marketer's dream, that one. Yeah. Toby with the ball screen. Doncic attacks it. Dips his shoulder, draws contact, throws no it way. up. <laughs> we'll go to the free throw line. If he'd got that one to drop, that would have been crazy. Just wanted to make sure the official knew he was shooting <laughs> the ball. <laughs> when is Doncic not shooting the ball? It's already the fifth foul that Luke has drawn from Venezuela in the game. This is the first of the free throws. That's uh, going to keep the score at the six point margin 45 to 39. Makes the second. And substitution's coming in. Sifontes is going to come back. Pedro Chorio sits. Johanna Sifontes will inbound the basketball. Well, sloppy is an understatement. Yeah. Kropelic was just active in the passing. And you can't see it, we can. Coach Duro is uh, beside himself on that one. Kropelic after the steal, can't knock the three down and they dodge the bullet. But Thelby comes down with a defensive rebound. Sifontes, who is quick enough to beat this pressure. Needs to get it into the half court, does. You know, puts it on the floor. It's so tough to break down on the ball. They do such a good job. Seven seconds on the possession. Fontes with a little floater, doesn't get it to go. And it was a shot that, that, that Slovenia wanted him to take, as opposed to a shot he might want. Doncic with 40 seconds left in the half. A tough half for Slovenia. Doncic turns the corner, gets in the lane, and is fouled. And I think it's a little bit more to that foul. Just a little bit of a message maybe from the Venezuelan players. Roughing up Doncic. It's not necessarily a bad strategy. Try and put him off his play, as you saw 
Gratterall just catching him from behind. With that right arm here, just puts it across the side of his face. No chance. Just going to get the score and maybe just puts him off easy a little bit. So look at Dantich on the free throw line. Well, I think if the neutrals were hoping for Venezuela to be competitive, then they know they are. Absolutely. And they're getting into this now, which is a great, going to be a great help for this Venezuelan lineup. Doncic goes over two. It's almost like the Lithuanian fans would rather face Venezuela in the final than they would. Oh, Slovenia that's for sure. Absolutely for sure. <laughs> yeah, gets it into the half court. Leon gets it back, will take the ball screen, looks to turn the corner, has Toby gardening, they get to the pick and roll, well played. and they just recognise the option and execute it really well. Yeah, it's just good control from Gaffrol in that situation, that little hesitation, enabling him to collect himself and find the space. Doncic trying to hold for the last one, off the glass for two, too big, too strong, knocks down the two-footer, they're going to go from the halfway line, and does not trouble the scorers. And we have reached the half, and Slovenia have a 48. That's not the surprise. <laughs> Venezuela right in this, have 41, just a seven point margin. And we've got a ball game. Yeah, we really have. Um, part of it down to Slovenia's poor shooting from outside, only shooting 25%. Venezuela not getting to the line once in that first half, though. It's going to be tough to win a game if you don't get anything from the free throw line. Both teams playing well, Venezuela using their fouls, that's for sure. They played uh, relatively physical for uh, a big second half to come. Well, there's the leading scorers, and Mike Toby has become that offensive focus for Slovenia. And uh, Chankar have only the two made threes. They really have been forced to play a different way. Let's, get, let's have a look at that with the best plays of the first half, because they really have been taken out of what they've been trying to do. Their perimeter game has been literally limited. And yeah. after that initial time of the pressure mark, and I know it was hard work for Venezuela, but they coped. Yeah, they did, and you're absolutely right. Venezuela, you know, you've said it throughout commentary, they clearly have picked their poison. They're saying, we're going to push you off the, the, the perimeter. We don't want you shooting 51% from outside as you have previously. So we're going to give you some options like we see here with Chanchar. Yes, they have given up some easy scores, but as the game's progressed, they've locked down the middle a little bit more. Particularly that man there, Gratwell, he's come in, done a great job in rim protection um, and actually got some scores at the other end as well. Um, but Slovenia, for me, the key for them to close out this game and to make their way to the final is on the defensive end. You know, they've still scored 48 points in the half. They'll be relatively happy with that, you know, on track for being near 100 again. Um, it's on the defensive end. Venezuela had big, big problems when Slovenia increased the intensity. When they were chasing them and keeping them outside the three-point line, then Venezuela had really no options uh, on the offensive end. However, how much energy do Slovenia have to do that? We're on game three now of the week for them. Um, but the one thing's for sure, is Slovenia are going to win this. They want to try and secure it early so they can maybe rest some players before a final tomorrow. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Obviously, you've got to get the win, and, and that's what we're saying. But uh, you could argue that uh, they really have um, in missing free throws, because Doncic is 6 for 10. He's missed his last four free throws. And uh, you've got to say that uh, whether that's the pressure of the situation, whether that is the just an off night at the office in some ways, They've just been, I think what Venezuela have just made them think about the basketball they're playing. And that's, that's what no one's done so far. And if you roll that forward in terms of do they qualify, well, there's no team better equipped because of their depth and their quickness on the perimeter to guard them on the perimeter than Lithuania. So obviously Lithuania are going to have a tough one against Poland. But uh, Poland will be able to tell Lithuania if you don't guard this team on the perimeter, they just pass and score. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing's for sure with this game, this is the most physical that a team has been against Slovenia, you know, and this is not what Slovenia want now. If they do make it to the finals, you don't want your most physical, you know, uh, demanding game the day before the final if you are going to make that final. So, yeah, a, a huge 20 minutes ahead. The seven point gap is not where Slovenia thought they would be. Well, we'll take a break. We'll be back shortly for the second half. Don't go anywhere.
Gripnik slices through the hard show. Oh, well, maybe the overpass. The three is good. That is a thing of beauty. As Gladys goes up the other way. Oh, what a block. Morea just got back in transition. He just outworked everybody. And when you're, when you're looking for something to inspire, this is what could do it. Second half action underway here in the Alexander Nicholas Hall. And right away, Dobritz reminds us that also he does have some hops as he comes in and catches the alley -oop pass and flushes it. Looking at the rim on the catch. Nice Grab pass. Again. Oh, oh, goodness me! Oh, oh. Dios mio! George Condit, the pick, the roll, the dunk in his face. Wow. Yeah, you gotta keep your hands up. And Solano avoids the foul. Oh! He hit the runway. How about that? Serbia trying to stop the play with the reach. We have walked this land for a long time. We know how far we've gone, and we're sure of how far we can go. Unity is not just a word here. It's not just a spirit in this sport. It's the way we all move. We are proud of our art, country, family, language, and culture. We are united by basketball. Welcome to FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup 2022.
Coach, probably uh, maybe an uh, unexpected result for your team in the first half. What was the toughest against Venezuela in the starting 20 minutes? Yeah, I don't think it's an unexpected result. I think we respect the Venezuela team. They play good, uh, especially on defensive end. They're trying to be very aggressive. Uh, I, I don't think we handled this uh, pretty well. And uh, we need to improve this part. And defensively, I think uh, we did the, gave them too many the chances to score easy baskets, so either from offensive rebound or transition offense. So if we manage to to contain these two things, uh, I think we can win. Do you think Luka Doncic is ready for the full second half because he was constantly touching his groin? Looks like he has a small injury. No, oh, I think he's ready. I don't think he had injury. It was a small cramp, I think, but it doesn't matter. I think we have a 12-player rotation, so. Uh, if he cannot play, somebody else will, but we'll try to manage his minutes also. Thanks for your time, coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Well, nothing short of what you'd expect from Coach Sakuns. You can see Luka Doncic's numbers from that first half. His 6 from 10 from the three throw line won't impress him. But uh, Coach really laid it out there that, uh, you know, we've got players. They can rotate. It's not about Luka Doncic entirely for... Uh, for the Slovenian national team and uh, gave a lot of credit to Venezuela, which is exactly what he should do because Venezuela's defense was exceptional at times. Yeah, absolutely it was. Um, you know, they may have struggled offensively. Interesting to see what Coach, their coach says. you've been says. battling in the first half with a very tough European squad. Do you think uh, if you could stop Luka Doncic, Mike Tobi, pick and roll offense in the second half, you could have a chance for the final? Hicieron muy buen, muy buen trabajo en el primer tiempo, que si podemos contener la defensa de pick and roll de Doncic y Toby, tenemos una chance para ganar en el cierre. Eh, tenemos que seguir con el plan defensivo. Eh, eso incluye quizás alguna libertad para Tobey. Y son los riesgos que vamos a tomar. O sea que vamos a seguir, vamos a seguir en este plan. We gotta stick to the defensive game plan. Uh, we have to give up something and try to keep uh, gambling on top base outside shot. Gracias por tu tiempo. Suerte. Well, I mean, we talked about it during the first half. They're, they're quite happy for Mike Toby to shoot the three, which is, uh, they're, they're putting so much pressure on the perimeter that, as we've said continually, they've picked that poison, and that poison at the moment has kept them to a seven-point game. And if they could uh, take care of good business on the glass and get some more transition hoops, they're right in this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's no way they're out of this game. They're down by seven. Yes, Slovenia are clearly favourites for this game due to the depth they've got, which is likely to pay even more dividends in the second half. But the Venezuelan personality of their team, the brand of their team, is just pure fighters. You've got veteran players that want to book a ticket to the Olympics. There's no bigger incentive for them to continue to do what they've done in the first half. And all it takes is, like you say, for Toby May to go, maybe to go a little bit cold on the perimeter, and straight away the Venezuelan defense is doing its job and Slovenia's offense will slow down. Well, 20 minutes to decide which one of these two teams will have the chance tomorrow to play for one of the four spots remaining in the Olympic tournament in Tokyo. And you can guarantee that that Venezuelan team, as you say, number of veterans, this is their last opportunity to play in the Olympic Games. They never tasted it last time and they're going to leave it right out there. And that could really leave us with an incredibly interesting second half. Stay with the plan, I think, is the most important thing to stress. They've decided how they're going to play. If everyone stays on the same plan, they've got a chance. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think there's any reason to go away from the pre-game plan. It's clearly, it's clearly worked. It's not worked perfectly for them. It needs to work better in the second half but it's definitely had um, some upsides. And you've seen this the first time this week that we've, Slovenia, we've seen Slovenia a little bit on the ropes. They've struggled. They've been a little bit rapid at the time. There's a reason why they're talking to the refs more. You know, if I'm Venezuela, that's confidence boosting for me. If they're having to try and get the refs on side, it shows that we're getting to them, that the, the game plan is working. Well, interestingly, for the first time in this tournament so far, they start with a separate, u different unit and uh, Alexei Nikolic, who has the basketball now, starts at the point, going back it. She's left on the bench. Not sure if that's a physical thing or if it's uh, anything else. Duncic in the post. 
And this is uh, going to test that resolve to stay with the defense. Funchage goes in inside out. Toby with a three. Knocks it down. With 3.1 on the possession. Exceptionally simple offense. Donchis just backing his way down until the double team came down. And the double team can't come from Toby. It's got to come from somewhere else. Fermi starts for Venezuela. The three in the corner is no good. Not sure I would not start Michael Carrera, but... Uh, Glad's edge is short. Defensive rebound, Ruiz owns it. No white shirts go to the glass. Guignol has it in the half court. We'll take the Ruiz screen. He doesn't dive. Chirio for three. Work on the glass. Both sets of players going after it. Early transition, Chanchar has it. Nikolic will take the ball screen. Toby will roll, but rolls once the player's developed and then finds himself on the glass. Stays with the play, gets another offensive rebound and put back. And those are the battles that Venezuela have to win. I just don't understand why Grafrol is not on the court. Anytime Toby's on the court for me, I'm putting Grafrol up against him. He's the one that he struggled against most. Grafrol is probably quicker on his feet than Ruiz, and he has a longer wingspan to deal with this. He's not going to give up three offensive rebounds, that's for sure. Toby wants a little help from the official. I just think that was just a hard battle for it, and he won it, so doesn't need the official's help. Julian will reverse the basketball. Vargas gets it on the second side. It's a little static on this uh, possession. Ruiz will slip, and then comes back to pick. Vargas mishandles, moves it on. But Thelmy for three is no good. And I think the Carrera absence is more worrying for Venezuela. 53 to 41. Doncic through traffic for two. Oh, what a move. Just puts Chario on skates as he goes to the basket. Right, smile on Doncic's face as he heads to the bench. It's a smart move, just stopping in such a short period of time. Look at this play. Steps in, puts the brakes on, puts the skids on Chario and gets the score. Chirio will be saying, no, that, that's that vinyl advertising. People slip on it all the time. <laughs> Doncic uh, just went through contact three or four times throughout the move and ends up with a really soft touch and finish. And a good timeout by Coach Giro. He gets out to a 14-point lead. He doesn't like what he sees. He's got to call it early. But I think you, know, you, 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 know, you need, uh, when you get a roll, get a roll back in, I'm desperate to see Mikhail Carrera back on the floor because those two, as much yeah. as anything else, have heart and soul of this team. And uh, without that, they're struggling. Yeah, and I think we're at that tipping point. It's been a 7-0 start to the third quarter for Slovenia. That's what's opened out uh, the biggest lead of the game. Uh, for me, Graterol, Carrera next to each other. I put them favourites on the board against Slovenia. When those two are on the floor, both of them get after the boards on both ends of the floor as well, really hard. And that's how Venezuela are going to get back into this game and potentially sneak the upset win if they're going to be crashing, particularly the offensive boards yeah. and getting second chances. And we're in that debate again. Yeah, he's got three fouls. What you're saving those two for? So you can finish the game and you're down 20. It's, uh, it's always a debate. And a if it's fouls, the same one he committed earlier on, just slightly behind and leans on the offense a little bit too much. Yeah, it's a tough matchup as well. Guyana has got um, some serious pace. Uh, even for Nikolic to try and apply that amount of pressure and stay ahead of the plate is a big ask. Ruiz is the release. Chirio comes off the screen, wraps the pass. Thelmy gets it back. Chirio again from the halfway oh. line, fills it up. Maybe he can't shoot from the three-point line. Nice. Maybe he needs to step it back. It's a huge three. Yeah, he has to be a long way out for the percentages to go up. And they just about survive with it. Char goes inside, Toby gets two more. That's just outworking the opponent. Coming down the way, though, Vargas off the glass, blows it. And unlike Slovenia, Venezuela had no on the glass. They go upstairs too much for Blazic. Yeah, and that's not the pass Blazic wants, particularly uh, at this stage of the game. He's played a few minutes already, 13. So a little bit of control brought back in. He needs a pass. Ruiz takes the long two, and if you're Mike Toby, like, yeah, fine. If you make that, good luck, because uh, 
Again, there are better options on the floor for Venezuela, and Vargas gets uh, sucked into the foul. And Ruiz is yet to score tonight. So, like you're saying, from Serena's point of view, you've been on the floor 14 minutes, you haven't scored, we'll quite happily let you take a long two. That's, uh, that's a nice option from a defensive perspective to give up. Well, Ruiz has uh, stepped out. No, he hasn't. He's still in. It's Vargas who stepped out. It's replaced by Vargas. Doncic. That's not a contest on the inside, but he blows the two. He either backed him to make that. Vargas in transition. Looks early. Pick and roll on the lift, wide open. Getting on for three is no good. And you just got to knock that down. Yeah, he's been struggling with an injury all week, and you just wonder how much that's playing on his mind as much as it is physically. Toby goes high low, Chanchar inside out, whistle on the play. Nice touch pass. And for the first time in a long time, Slovenia come down and make three quick passes, and they'll get options. Luka Rupnik is going to check in for his first minutes of the game, and you can only assume that Goran Dlagic is being rested out of the roster because there's a precaution about something because he played pretty well in that first half. Yeah, potentially it might be just flattening out the minutes, making sure everyone's, you know, had some minutes, but not too many. They will always have half an eye on the final tomorrow. Rupnik blocked to Maurice. He went cute with the little uh, try to go finger. Should have gone straight to the back. Or gave, would have given no room for the block. Great work by Ruiz to help though. Yeah, it's a great help across from Ruiz, but you're right, if Rupnik had gone to the far side of the basket, just wouldn't have been able to get the block because the ring would have been in the way. Duncic is the release. We'll take the Toby ball screen. They fills the double team, needs to pass, finds a pass. Lazic attacks the closeout, puts up the soft little float up, and they don't get the... The referees were not sure on that one, but uh, they finally come down to a decision. It's, uh, Venezuela basketball, Vargas will inbound. Well, Guerra rolls in, as is Cervantes. But again, we're not seeing Carrera come back in. And, you know, yes, he's on three fouls. He's an experienced player. He should be able to play with three fouls. Uh, 100%. You want to give him a few minutes here in this third quarter. It looks like he's about to check in now, though. He's gone to the, uh, the official's table. Whistle on the play. Gave Vargas the middle, did Luka Rupnik. Don't want to give up the middle that easily. But Rupnik not having the impact he would love to have had. But uh, Venezuela will have it on the sideline. Pedro Chorio inbounds. Vargas will take the ball screen. A little hesitation, gets in the lane. Inside out, Carrera just off the bench, lines up the three and knocks it down. Straight nice, away. Nice penetration, drew the help. And again, the wide open shot. It's pretty much something you can't give up at this level. Rupnik. Lazic to answer with three, rims it in and out. Great work, Chancha on the glass, gets a little contact and looks like he's rolled his ankle. Yeah, he looks in serious amount of pain at the other end of the floor. That's a big worry. Chiro for three is no good. Doncic comes down with it and the official has to stop it, although he is not happy. That's a but he's going to get up, though, which is, and he's going to hop, though. Which no. Is not a good sign. No. Maybe. Uh, That's a, a very big concern for Slovenia at this stage. Let's have a look at the replay. Didn't really see it there. No. I can't really see which ankle it's turned. Oh, he stood on Carrera's foot. Didn't look like a full flip though, it just looked more of a jar than anything, so hopefully it's not as bad. So he's getting a lot of assistance off the floor. Looks like he's putting some weight on it though, which is always good to see. It's when you can't put any weight on it that you know you've got big problems. So if... Uh, if the luggage is carrying something, and, uh, and Char is feeling that ankle, then the 12-player rotation that coach talked about at the half-time is going to be under a little pressure. Rupnik for three. Can't get it to go. Ball goes out of bounds in Venezuela. Down 10, but we're still five to go in the third. That's a much better sign. We've got Chancha on his own actually trying to walk it off. Although... Doesn't look comfortable. I don't think we'll see him again today. Oh, I don't think we'll see him today, absolutely. they'll keep him out. They'll be icing that up. Again, as much treatment on it as they can in the hope that they can get him ready for tomorrow if they're in the Carrera. final. Great recovery. Goddard working hard on the glass, but doesn't get it. 
Mike Toby's look Mike Toby's looking a little gassed at the moment. Blasic for two is good. Toby stood on the three point uh, on the foul line on that one. And the trouble you've got is Toby's played all but three minutes of the game so far. I'm not sure he can put in a 35, 38 minute game in game three of this qualification tournament. And at what point are you thinking, well, we need some gas for him for tomorrow as well? Vargas stops and pops the three as long defensive rebound. Blasic is all over the stats line at the moment. Attacks it at speed. We'll have to bring it back out. And Luka Doncic may be playing in the fourth quarter today. Steps back, lines up the three, drops it. Just signature Luka. And signal to the group of Slovenian fans in the crowd who responded with just an almighty cheer. Vargas still there for Venezuela. Pereira will hit the second side. Giro lines up the three. Is short, far too close that one. Luka Doncic in traffic. Tries to be a little cute. Venezuela can't save it, but no one told him that it's, uh, on that occasion, no one told him that uh, Cervantes or Carrera was coming from behind. Doncic wasn't expecting the defense to come from behind. But they've looked to put a lot of pressure on Luca today, and at times it's paid. He's made a couple of mistakes in his handle. As much as uh, Venezuela are doing a great job, they're still down 15. And, and Slovenia, as much as they're being stretched, they've got a few injury issues. They're not playing as smoothly as they would like, but they're still up 15. So, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. going towards what the form book said yeah. before the game, but this is absolutely the biggest test they've had, and yeah, so it yeah. should be. It's the semi finals. Yeah. You're two games away from a, a ticket to the Olympics. It should be the toughest game you play. Doncic fills the double team, and the double team is late, so. Goodwell was late to try and stop the turning the corner, so has to call it. Just don't know if they have to show that hard on the high screen, especially when the screen is that high. I know Luca has range, but there's range and range. Yeah, I still don't think Luca's first option in that situation is going to be taking the shot. Chorio sits down. Soha's checked in. Luka Rupnik has the basketball, turns down the screen, draws contact, and that'll be the fifth team foul. So Slovenia with uh, three and a half to go, find themselves on the free throw line. Luka's going to have a conversation with coach. And Luka Rupnik is hopefully going to go two for two for the line for Slovenia. It's great to hear the fans in the stands making their uh, their voices heard. They've certainly been missed, haven't they? And uh, mm. yeah, it's lovely to hear. And I imagine for the Slovenian players and even the Venezuelan players have got their small pocket of fans here today. It's uh, definitely great compared to the last 18 months or so they've had without fans. Slovenia show a little pressure. Luka Rupnik bringing some energy. It's caught going forward though. Gregory Vargas will get it back off Pereira. Guarded by Toby, got a mismatch. Ball sticks. Toby shows in the baseline. They drop it to the wing. Floater for two is no good. Put a roll all over the glass, comes up with the offensive rebound. Vargas needs, doesn't get, goes to. Soho puts it on the floor. And the foul's going to be called on uh, Edo Muric. And I know Grafferol isn't the go-to guy, but when they get that mismatch in that situation, he had Blazic on his back. He needs to seal him down and offer something. Because even if he doesn't get the ball, he's going to make Slovenia have to help down. Blazic doesn't want to play back to the basket post-defense against Grafferol. No, nope, that's true. David Kubian checks in. Gregory Vargas. Stops, nowhere to go. Kubian crosses over, gets to the lane, has it knocked away by Muric. Muric and Blazic. And another sign of how tough this has been. That's the first time I can remember in the whole competition Slovenia lo lo not looking to explore transition. Doncic on a pick and pop. Puts it on the floor, steps back for a tough three. Oh, oh my goodness me. That's, that's near unguardable, right? Yeah. 
that's the point where as a defender you're going, there is almost nothing I can do if a guy's going to jump almost out of bounds and release the ball. Well, he I can only do so much. Sat with some of our colleagues on that one. Blocked by Toby. Doncic has it again. Slovenia looking to extend the lead right now. It's already a 20-point game. Doncic steps back for another. Back-to-back -back three is long. Ruiz keeps it alive and Rupnik has it. And yeah. that's the Slovenia we've seen for the rest, for the beginning of this tournament. It's almost Everybody like they running. can smell this blood in the water. They know that the game's there for killing now. Muric, wide open, doesn't get it to go. Gerard comes down with a defensive rebound. Kubian's got to answer. Stops, fires up the three in transition, fills it up. That is a big play. That is a critical play. Brings it that, down below the 20 point mark. As Slovenia were just really starting to gain some momentum. You could feel the confidence rising in the team as well. So that's a smart play by Kubian. Rubnik and Doncic combine in the backcourt. Uh, whistle and more free throws for Rubnik. And Kubian knew the screen was coming but didn't force him to use it. And Toby <laughs> gets a breather. Gets, gets a breather. Mark that one down. But he's only going to get a minute and 30 because he'll be ready to go in the second, in the fourth quarter. dimitri has got to prove something here. He was as ineffective as he had been as good as he had been in the first two games. He's got to be get back to that level because he's got to be a reasonable rotation on the inside. Rupnik on the free throw line. Yeah, this is one of the weaknesses you would say within the Slovenian roster, that their front court really is, you know, the big man, legitimate big men is Toby and Dimitz, and it doesn't really go beyond that. Yes, you've got size, but most of that size wants to stretch the floor. The likes of Chanchar, they don't want to be playing back to the basket. They want to be playing more free-flowing or working on the perimeter. Rupnik goes two for two from the line. And Slovenia again with pressure up the floor. They're going to call the pelvic to the foul. And I have to agree with Carrera. He's like, why did you do that? There's no need. And uh, referee makes the good call. Yeah, Prepolic sometimes has some of those moments. He plays with such intensity, but it's so unnecessary just to dip the shoulder into a screen. It would have been just as easy to walk around it. And Prepolic continues to talk to the officials. So he walked the floor. Carrera's on the free throw line. Exactly where he would expect to eat into the 19-point lead. It doesn't feel like a 19-point game because the, the actual effort, physicality that Venezuela have brought to the game makes you feel it's an absolutely a lot closer than that. It is, and you also get that feeling that they're just not going to give up. No matter what the gap got to, Venezuela are going to continue to, to stick with the plan and stick with the physical nature of the game. Guerrero goes two for two. Oh, interesting 2-2-1 two, two, press now for Venezuela. First time we've seen that. Rupnik just advances it, gets it over the halfway line. Muric comes off the screen, going to hand off and spot. Lazic tries to turn the corner, stops and pops on the elbow, doesn't get the roll. Venezuela secure it, so high has it, gives it up. Kubian is going to stop, same spot and pop and fills it up. Deja vu. Same spot, same result, right? And this is uh, critical for Venezuela now. They are going to have to start getting some scores from outside to be able to chip away into this lead. Ripnik in the half court. Blazic. Ripnik on a rip through, could have gone, but decides to take the long three. He's long with it. Kubian comes down with a defensive rebound. Kubian in transition again is obviously dangerous. Turns the corner. Gets a little hole under the defense, stops in the lane. And Dimas did a nice job actually hedging, just showed a little contact but stopped the roll. And they're going to hold for as long as they can. There's a three, four second differential between game and possession. Look at Rupnik. Takes the ball screen, gets a hard show. Ruiz gets beaten on the dribble though. Nice find, Blazic steps to the corner, checks his feet, puts it up and nails the three from the corner. Checked his feet, but it was still given as a two, I think. So that'll do it for the three, end of three. And Sablini have opened it out to a 71 to 55 point advantage. Did most of that damage early in the quarter. They're in control, although it doesn't feel as though it's a 16 point game.
No, it certainly doesn't. And the damage in that quarter was done on the defensive end for Slovenia. They kept Venezuela to just 14 points in that quarter. Again, Venezuela only been to the, the free throw line twice. Um, but yeah, Slovenian defense was m much more impressive in that quarter. Well, the best plays of the third quarter. And they started with the clear out down low, kick to the three. A little bit NBA-like in terms of the help not actually rotating very well and fill in the middle and Luka Doncic took over a bit at the start of the third. He gets the easy layup, the work before, but Mark, the, the, the impressive thing for me is they're not playing great, but they're still playing, they're still playing the same style. They want to do the same thing. You've got to credit Venezuela for making this tough. It's not as if Slovenia have tried to do that much differently. Venezuela have just done a nice job defensively. Yeah, absolutely. Slovenia are sticking to the same style, the same rhythm. They're not, they're not particularly different from the first two games that they've played, but they've just entered a much tougher game, a much more physical game. Um, but you're right, Doncic has stepped up in this game as well. He's now played 25 minutes. It's unlikely, I think, that he won't play any minutes in the fourth quarter because he hasn't played any fourth quarter minutes so far. But 21.7 rebounds, nine assists for Luca, And then uh, Mike Tobey's put in a shift already 27 of the 30 minutes he's been on the floor which I find interesting because if they do make it to the final how much of the, the final energies are going to have left obviously it's a ticket to Tokyo you can find some energy reserves for that but he's had a big night as well 23 points and 12 rebounds but still this game isn't done a 16 point lead is a big ask but uh, Venezuela certainly won't go away uh, well, we talked about um was there any issues with uh, Zoran Dragic? And I'm thinking, well, he hasn't played the whole second, third quarter. It might be a problem. Well, he's out to start of the fourth, back on the floor. You wonder if that's a reaction, though, to the Chanchar injury as well. Possibly. He's just taking the rotation spot from Chanchar. And the fact Doncic is sitting at the start of the fourth. Carrera gets to the foul line, pops the two, and drops that with ease. Ripnik needs to pass, controls Muric's uh, spot and relieves the pressure. Trepelic and Dragic. This is a little bit more Slovenia-like, the pass being kicked around and oh, misses the three. There's a whistle on the play and I think that's going to be a defensive box out. I think, I think the other thing you've got for Slovenia now, it's very clear that if they manage the clock, they've won this game. Oh, yeah. and they don't mind if they win by five or 50. It doesn't really matter. It's a ticket to the final is what they want. So it's clear because we saw in that first play that Zoran Dragic was wide open in the corner. They could have passed for the three, but they didn't. Mm. They decided to take their time, slow things down. Well, Dragic gets the easy two on the out-of-bounds play, and they turn it over. And I think Venezuela may have, well, possibly have fallen off the cliff now. I think it's, uh, they're not going to stop working, but uh, the intensity defensively is just a little bit softer. Imec goes up with the left hand, can't get it to go, whistle on the plate. And they're getting out work now on the boards, which has not happened at all throughout this game. No, not particularly when Carrera... Well, it's not happened in the Olympic qualifying tournament full stop, particularly when Carrera's been on the floor. Um, but it's interesting to see what the final 10 minutes plays out for us. I don't think Venezuela are, are, are fully done yet. I think there's just still a little bit left in them, but they will be running a little bit low on energy as we progress. Rupnik. Nice curl. Tobic goes up, drops it inside. Muric for two. That's a wonderful selfless pass from Preplic. You know, he could have taken that shot. It's certainly in his wheelhouse, that shot, but he hands it off to Muric for the much easier higher percentage. Yeah, and I think that's where we are again now. This is, this is where Slovenia were earlier in this competition. And we're back to business as usual, are we? Could be on. Well, he had the matchup, could have stopped and popped it. On now, fires the three and can't get it to go. And Muric comes up with yet another hard-working play. Look at Lupnik. Drive lane opens up, gets to the middle, goes with a right-hand runner for two. And the game there has that Slovenia earlier in the week feel about it as they just come down the floor and open it out to a 20-point lead. 77-57, eight to go in the fourth. And Coach Sakuric now will be talking, I think will be thinking about how do I protect, how do I conserve energy when I've got a big one tomorrow. Time out, Venezuela. And you can understand Coach Duro's frustrations because he, he you know, 
clearly not speaking the language, but you get the message. It's not difficult. You abandoned everything we've been doing for the last two and a half games. Well, two games in three quarters. What's going on? Why have we stopped doing yeah. what we were doing? Why have we stopped playing with physicality and intensity? Have we given up on this game? Are we saying it's over already? Even though we've got 10 minutes left. So that really was just a timeout, almost to call out his players and say, you have to give me another eight minutes and 10 seconds of heart and passion. Yeah, and, I, and, and he's more than experienced, experienced enough to know. His players were experienced enough to know, and he's trying to hold them to account now. You know, it's a 20 point game against the European champions. So he's not, it's more about him and them, isn't it? Pereira will relieve the pressure on the inbound, gets it back to Vargas. And one thing for sure, Vargas is not going to stop. Pereira gets a little flip handoff. Vivian coming back to the ball, they go to the corner of Chirio though, can't get it to drop. Muric gets a little, to say, just get worked out the lane. And I think, and I think Muric is unhappy that he threw the ball at him. Well, I don't I, understand why he's unhappy. One, no. he didn't know the foul was going to be called, so he's trying to keep possession for his team. I think it's exactly the right play. And Muric pushed him out of bounds. Yeah. You know, which is quite the call. I'm not sure how Muric can be the one who's upset. Career is smart enough now to. Um... He's also thrown at his legs. It's not like he's thrown it in his face or anything. He's thrown it as low as he can just to keep possession. Ah, oh, well, they'll be fine. <laughs> Career wants it in the post, doesn't get it. Could be on, tries to turn the corner, but. Uh... They show hard, Ruiz down the middle, inside, outside, extra pass. Carrera had the opportunity to take it, but takes it inside. Now they'll kick it. Could be on for three, is no good. And Carrera is just a force on the glass, but he can't retain possession. The Lagic will push it. They have numbers down the floor, but nowhere to go. Chirio gets back. Carrera is just about to collect that and gets rewarded and one. And I think Muric's frustration gets a little bit, a bit better of him. Yeah, it certainly does, but much better play from Venezuela. Their reaction to the timeout from Coach Muro definitely pays off. You know, that last transition, they moved the ball well. It was quick, it was selfless. Little bit got the ball stuck in Carrera's hands down low, which kind of hesitated a little bit, but much better. Exactly what we, you know, you need to see from Venezuela if they're going to fight back into this one. Carrera to complete the three-point play, does. And not that he had to enhance his reputation at all, but he's just put together here a, a, a series of games that uh, just underline the level he's op he operates at. Rupnik in the half court, and uh, Slovenia are in that time and possession moment. Dimec, who again hesitates, and hesitate is the word that sums up his performance, I think. And that's one of the things you, you've got to pick out of this. This is the, you know, it, as much as it's tough to pick problems within the Slovenian roster because they have been unbelievably impressive, um, even if today's been a tougher game, it is that front court. Toby is clearly a very, very strong player on both ends of the floor, but Dimitz, yes, he's coming in to be the role player, but he's not able necessarily to be a focal point on the offense. Well, with uh, 4.3 on the possession, Coach Akunic takes the time out. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Hey, what we do is we go again, listen, for Perle, we go uh, Kansas 1. Okay, Kasuamo. Tale tale ke je sule body. Perle, yeah, Mura, Mike, Rupa, Soki. Soki, tele se ušunja i pastizi tuki, da razumeš? Bob, Kurti, Block, Mike, this is the most important screen, okay? We heard the name Mike. Does that mean Mr. Mike Toby's back on the floor? It oh, does. Yeah. <laughs> no rest for the wicket for uh, poor Toby. And you've got to think that if uh, Dimic had been performing more um, decisively, that they probably wouldn't go back to Toby right now because there's no need to. They're going to run another bounce play. They might. I don't think you're going to see Toby left in the game for very long. But uh, he's setting the most important screen, as you heard, getting held, and all that was about wow. creating a gap for Pel Pelic to... And they're going to call the offensive foul. Great reaction by the Lagic. Yeah, he does that time and time again, Dragic. He reads the transition well enough that he can position himself in the lane to draw the foul. But yeah, an unusual mistake from Prepolic. 
The one question I have about Dimitz going out, though, is what signal does that give him from his coach? It kind of says to me, you don't have confidence in me. Yes, I made a mistake. I know I made a mistake. But you've got to give that player the chance to come over, especially when you know you're going to need Dimitz to play well in the final. Deflection defensively. Muric has to recover it, drops it to Rupnik with only six on the possession. Rupnik breaks the defense down, looks it off. They're going to call the travel. And I think that's a little harsh on Luba Rupnik because he hadn't actually traveled when the whistle went. He may well have been going to travel. <laughs> I wouldn't mind seeing it again, it looked different, which I, sometimes I think travels get called because they look different. Vargas, I think Vargas is struggling. I think he oh, might, his, yeah, yeah, finger. his fingers popped Whoa. out. Anyone he's, that uh, plays basketball knows that pain. Yeah, he's 35, he'll just pop it back. He's done it, it must have happened so many times to him if it's happening now. Yeah. He'll pop it back in and he'll be ready to go. Whether they need him to go again, who knows. Luba Ruknik's going to sit, Luka Doncic is back in. Yeah, fingers back in place, I think. Ready to go. Like you say, any basketball player that's played long enough, pretty much every finger can dislocate and pop back in relatively quickly now. Yeah. And Luka gets his first fourth quarter minutes of the Olympic qualifying tournament. Could be Ann. Has a look at his options. Kalea. Ann has it guarded by Propelic. Cifantes backs out, he's gone nowhere with that, had to fire up a prayer, which he's not answered. And they, they ran some nice stuff until Cifantes backed it out, for whatever reason. Doncic. Kubian doing everything he can to take him out of where he wants to go, nice pass. And in reality, the pass wasn't there when Doncic, Doncic first looked, then he just waited for the defense to try and unravel. Yeah, and patience, from, patience from both sides as well. Toby waited. You know, he didn't run away. He didn't try and cut away from the paint. He knew that the pass would come eventually. Extra pass. Carrera again turns down the three, attacks the middle. And Doncic tells the official it was a very good call. But Carrera's um, gone away from that three-point game. Yeah, you don't know if he's lost confidence in that side of his game. But yeah, clear foul from, yeah, yeah. from Doncic. Rian, catch and release is short. And the ball is knocked out of bounds by Ruiz. And for all reasons, is uh, some of his issues, especially guarding Toby, like the whole of this Venezuelan lineup just hasn't quit, still no. putting in a shift. And that's the thing, particularly on the glass. Every single player has chased down and hunted the glass as hard as they could. They've looked for the loose balls as much as they could. And that's what's got them into this semi-final. And that's, you know, that's what's kept them within touching distance of a phenomenal Slovenian team. Perch wraps it to the corner. The open three is good. And as soon as, and this is the, this is the warning sign for anybody, whether it be here or if they make the tournament in Tokyo, as soon as you take off that defensive intensity, by any amount, they make open passes and knock down open shots. It's, uh, as Muris does a great job over the top defensively, knows out of bounds though. So just over five to go of what uh, is clearly going to be a Slovenian win. But, uh, and I think uh, coach Sekulic is definitely thinking about tomorrow now because he's like, uh, we've got a game tomorrow. I've had everybody in the game. I'm still gonna keep him in the game. So I think, I have to rest him because he is thinking about lineups and rotations. And how am I going to deal with the fact that uh, Chan Charkar may not be out of play? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Chabashik come in and get some minutes. Hasn't played so far tonight. And also, Hrovat has had limited minutes tonight, only yeah. playing nine. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Another two, three minutes if we start seeing some rotations come through. Um, and particularly the big man, so uh, Toby, maybe get, get a break and Dimitz come back into the action. See, Muric is one of the guys that, you know, he's literally going to have to look at four out without really, I mean, Chanchar, regardless of his two metres, um, two metre three size, plays exactly like everyone else plays on this team, yeah. except for Toby and uh, Dimitri. So it is about the rotation. It is about who, who will step into that spot. Because then you get into a conversation about, well, is that an opportunity, as they looked at yesterday, for Lithuania to go big and big and really try and bully their way 
to Tokyo because uh, who would take the, the other matchup? Yeah, it's going to be tough enough for Toby anyway. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be, to be honest, the next semi final is going to be interesting in its own right. You know, if Balfsarowski can stay in the game for Poland, can he cause Valentunis and Sabonis some problems? He certainly has the talent. He's young, some inexperienced, so he gets into foul trouble. But yeah, the next semi final, um, although Lithuania favourites. Chiro drops the three on a nice out of bounds, just flared off the screen high. But yeah, although Lithuania are favourites, Poland are a very, very good team and they've shown. Some real uh, faces of play that have been very impressive. Zagic off the glass, doesn't get it to go. So Dragic only knows one way to play, and that's with <laughs> complete intensity. Keeping on with the three is no good. Dragic can't get it, Shiro can. Get a new full team, they're going to recycle. Bethelmi's the man to release the pressure. Kubian will take the ball screen. Shiro puts it on the floor, in the lane, floats it off the glass for two, is no good. And Delagic comes down with it, looks for Luka Doncic, who will advance the basketball. Muric will get it back to Luka, and one. As simple as that. And we are now entering the final stages. I think the Venezuelan resolve is gradually eroding. They've put absolutely everything they can into this qualifying tournament, but they've just come up against well, what must be seen as one of the best teams in the world right now. Well, they're definitely up there. We all know they've got some weaknesses in terms of balance, but uh, in terms of output, they're tough to guard. The challenge will be whoever they play in the final tomorrow, although they've already, obviously they've already played Poland, the challenge will be is that the team they'll be playing can possibly match them for offensive output. Doncic is uh, going to shoot free throws tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. That certainly is homework for the night, for sure. Vargas will advance it and hit the second side here. I think that came off of Luca's uh, toe. I don't think he kicked it, though. So therefore, there won't be a reset. So they have seven seconds to get something they want. And Vargas, who's probably been faced with the situation numerous times in his career, gets to the line, kicks it, but Felmi passes it up. Guerrero for three is no good. Uh, Luka Doncic comes down with the defensive rebound. Yeah, Luka's just two rebounds short of a triple-double now. He's uh, obviously had a season full of triple-doubles again, so interesting to see if he can get one Floats on the stage. It's an upstairs for the throwdown. And it's, uh, it's a nice relationship. Luka asks to come out. Well, my job is done. Is the way he looks at that. Vargas gets the sweet little reverse layup. Muric drops it into Toby, who's going to go back to him. Delagic. Toby with the ball screen. Delagic gets to the elbow, lifts, does Muric for three, lines it up, is long. Toby still working on the glass. Delagic. Drops the three from the top of the keyway. And Slovenia are now slipping into that easy style of play they have that's so beautiful to watch. Nice pass. And Vargas, Jose Vargas, gets the easy two. Well, Jose Vargas at 39 and Gregory Vargas at 35. This might be the last world tournament that uh, we've seen them on. And they've been just tremendous servants wow. of Venezuelan basketball as Dragic just underlines that uh, he can shoot the basketball. And what it's good to see as well, the Slovenian players are playing on the crowd as well. Uh, quite a big contingent of Slovenian fans and they're enjoying that as Doncic intentionally fouls so he can get off the floor and get the substitutions in. Just one rebound short of that triple-double. 23 points, 9 rebounds, 13 assists. Toby heads to the bench with 27 points and 12 rebounds. Big performance for those two. Well, both Vargas's stay on the floor. I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Duro, you know, brings them out in, uh, in a little while. Maybe he's letting them enjoy as many minutes as he possible, can. Possible, absolutely possible. Gregory Vargas just backs out, tries to get a drive lane. Doesn't get one, but it goes 
out of bounds, but the ball retained by Venezuela. Interesting to see Slovenia drop into a 2-3 zone as well with this uh, second string. Great work on the glass. The putback is no good. Vlagic comes down with a defensive rebound. And Nikolic will advance the basketball. It's almost five out for Slovenia at the moment. Yeah, Muric is uh, taking on the big man responsibilities. Nikolic for three is good. And if there's a team that can quite happily play five out, I think it's probably Slovenia. Everyone on the floor now can shoot the ball at a high percentage. Vargas has it in the corner, dribbles out, has a look at his options. Eight on the possession. A little head fake. Venezuela back to standing still. You know, puts it up and drops the tough three on the little step back. Uh, Nikolic with just over a minute to go. Penetration, that's it with the three, got it. Signals to the coach, coach, what's your problem? <laughs> Give me minutes. You know, and this is the opportunity. Time. It's the opportunity for players like Jabasic when they do get these minutes to, to show that, what, firstly, that they're not a liability on either end of the floor and that they can make an impact. And he's certainly done that there. Switches into the lane, stops Vargas getting the ball. Agri Vargas fires up the three, is no good. I think any neutral in the crowd was willing that one in. So Nikolic with a chance to for Slovenia to again get to the 100-point mark, but I think we're all talking about this one being called off. And they're going to just walk it off. Nikolic at the halfway line. They'll give it to the official, and the official is going to have to blow the 24-second violation. This is one of those things where the players have decided the game is over. <laughs> a highly entertaining game, though. And the, the reason it was really entertaining is that Venezuela really did put a shift in. They forced Slovenia to play 98 to 70 as the final score. Slovenia advance to the final with the chance to qualify for Tokyo. Venezuela were going to go home, but with their heads held high because that was a tough performance by the team from the Americas. But Slovenia just had too much in the end. Yeah, Venezuela held their end of the bargain up, that's for sure. They brought everything they could to the party. You can see they're shooting in again. Only going to the free throw line three times, that's tough. Slovenia dominated the boards, and Venezuela's tough style of defence didn't quite pay dividends enough for them in this. Plenty of smiles for Slovenia. Well, Slovenia behind the 27 points from uh, Mike Toby, and uh, he's going to be so, so important when it comes to the final. That uh, This team got to come and do it again. And the one thing that uh, Luka Doncic understands is the most important people in the gym sometimes are the fans. So as he signs off, we're going to take a look at the best plays of that second half. And the Doncic-Toby combination is quite effective. Yeah, absolutely. They went back to a very simple style of play. They knew what the uh, the advantage that they have was. But in that second half, it was clear that the Slovenian defence was the key. They held them to 14 points in the third quarter, just 15 points in the fourth quarter. And when you're playing a team with the offensive firepower of Slovenia and moves like that, you're going to need to score more than 29 points in a half if you want to come away with the win. But don't take anything away from Venezuela, though. Some big performances. Carrera with another 16.6 rebound performance. Chario with 16 points. Kubian with 10 points. They gave absolutely everything. And they have done in every game they've played in. They just came up against uh, a basketball machine that is Slovenia at the moment. Oh, absolutely. And everything that's good for Venezuela, although the interesting thing will be over the next couple of years will be the transition away for some of those veterans who've just been phenomenal in the way that they have uh, you know, represented Venezuela in a time when Venezuela have made some huge strides in terms of their performances in, in the America's Cup and on the world stage. Obviously, my, uh, Mikhail Carrera is still only 28, so he's going to be one of those guys that's going to oversee that transition.
Yeah, I think they, there's they, at least half the roster, though, that won't yeah. see another Olympic Games. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's definitely half the roster are in that sort of uh, scenario. A lot of people are wrong side of 30. Yeah. So, you know, you've got to look at what's going to happen to Venezuelan basketball. But one of the things you don't have to think much about is looking for where Slovenian basketball wants to be. They've got an Olympic Games to try and play for tomorrow. They've got a Eurobasket to defend next year. So everything looks good in the land of Slovenia. And when you've got a superstar, you're in great shape. But some question marks about tomorrow, though. Because we saw Chanchar go down. You know, like it's obviously no real problems for him. He sat the third quarter. And um, so Chanchar's going to be crucial. And can he play, can he not play? Because matchup-wise, they could be up against uh, a hell of a problem. Yeah, they could, because Chancho, though, not an orthodox big man, he would rather be on the perimeter, can play some post-defense. Yeah. And, you know, no matter who they face tomorrow, that could be important, whether they're facing Poland and it's Balsarowski that needs guarding or whether they're facing Lithuania and it's the uh, terrible two of Valanciunas and Sabonis that you're having problems with. The front court is where Slovenia look weakest and they need support for Toby. Um, plenty for Lithuania to take out of this game though or Poland whoever gets to the final they'll be looking at areas thinking yeah that worked for Venezuela and I'm sure they'll be making notes well what an absolute privilege that one was Venezuela get the win over, uh, get the lose to Slovenia coming up later Lithuania in Poland the second semi-final who will face Slovenia find out then join us for that one we will be here make sure you join us